Hello friends, welcome to another episode of the Rifle Church channel. Today we're going to be taking this Italian M1 Garand out for a spin. Going to run about uh, 100, 100 rounds through it. Uh, the ammunition we're shooting out of it today are hand loads. They're 150 grain Hornady uh, Spitzer points. And simply because I couldn't get my hands on any full metal jacket. Supplies are a little bit thin right now. But we're going to take this rifle for a spin and put a bunch of ammunition get it nice and hot. And it's uh, since you got a, a brand new build, this is what this is. It's an Italian build, but it's it's got um, a Criterion barrel on it, which is brand spanking new. It has been fired just to test for function only. It's never had any accuracy work done on it. It's never had any rapid fire or any kind of different kind of serials uh, run on this rifle. So we're gonna we're gonna try to do a few of those today. A couple of different tests. We'll try to do some, uh, have to go through a zeroing exercise so I can be printing at 100 meters. And that at that point in time, we're going to be doing some, some precision work, some work off of bags. Uh, we'll do some standing. We'll do some, some kneeling, sitting. And uh, just kind of give you a little bit of an evaluation as to uh, what, what, what I thought of the rifle. I mean, honestly, I mean, it's an M1 Garand and it's a, uh, it's a new, it's a, it's a, it's a new build, uh, not a new rifle, but it's a new build. And so what I, what I mean by that is that the, the owner of this rifle wanted to try to impart onto the shooter, whoever was going to be eventually being the end of market for this rifle. Um, he wanted that person to be able to get what the, what a USGI soldier or an Italian soldier would have received back in the day when this would have been nearly issued um, to uh, you know, a soldier or a Marine or whoever it may have been. And so, I mean, nothing here is gonna be tricked out. They're all just gonna be USGI kind of spec parts but new components and parts. You know, that's been a, um, not, it has not been easy to get all of these parts so that they can be assembled into rifles, spec parts. Um, however, he's done it, and I'm really looking forward to, to shooting this rifle. As you can see here, the uh, rifle is ejecting brass forward into the front about one and a half meters, slightly to the right, but in a nice little pile, forward and to the right, 
One, two, three, four, at least five of them right there. This is a bit of a bit of a cluster here. One, two, three. That was the first group. Um, four or five. I put the the windage dial the wrong way. <laughs> oh, I figured out what I did. Brought it back, and uh, one, two, three, four. That's a pretty good little group right there. And uh, then I then I spun the dial up and tested it and see where it was. So there we are. So that's basically just zeroing exercise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rounds. We're expended for that. Uh, currently, the the rifle is basically a 200 meter zero, maybe a 300 meter zero. I have to, I'd have to play around with that. This is the point of aim. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six rounds, and to put all six of those rounds forward, about a meter ahead, a meter and a half ahead, about half a meter to the right. So all the rounds are going forward, um, and they're they're ejecting forward and slightly to the right and you should see the uh, the the brass on the uh, wrecking handle here it's hitting that the brass is hitting this thing really hard anyhow uh, let's do some fun shooting we're zero now it's kind of interesting the uh, the M1 group by the way check out that background look at that mountain up there look at that mountain up there nice shooting range huh Anyway, the, uh, the M1 Garand for me has been always been a special rifle. I can't afford to keep them fed because they damage the brass so badly. But uh, kind of interesting, when I was 25, 26 years old, um, I actually kind of grew up uh, doing competition shooting, 22 small rifle, 22 long rifle. And, uh, and uh, I went through puberty, discovered girls, Graduated from high school, you know, put myself through forestry college, all that different, different kind of stuff. So I mean, uh, the musketry, the, the shooting, it all became kind of second or third place. Never found time to do it. When you're a starving student, trying to to have the money to acquire ammunition is not going to happen. Anyway, so 25, 26 years old. First rifle I acquired was an M1 Garand. Got me back into shooting. Got me interested again. Uh, put me in the poorhouse. Didn't know anything about M1 Garands then. I do now, but back then I didn't. I uh, didn't know or appreciate what I had. No particular training, you know, on the platform itself, on the rifle system itself, what what its what its uh, characteristics were, all that different kind of stuff. But uh, this what got me back into shooting. It's, and essentially, I can say, if it wasn't for the M1 Garand. There'd be no rifle chair. There would be no rifle chair. Anyway, let's do some fun shooting with this rifle. Good. We're ready. Target right, 100 meters.
You are not feeding well. There. see the target. Well, it's a good thing this wasn't for score, but on hits on target, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine misses would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's two off paper, but essentially uh, 18 on paper, which is not bad for this course of fire. I mean, it's not, it's not anything particularly special, but it's more about positional shooting and your time. Um, so that's kind of interesting. I'll keep that one, put it in the, in the book, the book of records. And now let's try some precision shooting. Okay, these uh, groups will be shot prone supported, meaning that I'm not actually resting the rifle, I'm just resting my forearm on the bags like so. For extra added support, and this will be a deliberate. There's lots of mirage here. Love that sound. <laughs> Let's have a look. So that was the point of aim. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
so that's not bad for a grouping. Um, that's prone supported. Let's try shooting this thing off bags and see what happens. All right, this will be the right target. And this will be for precision. Another eight rounds. Okay. There we go. This rifle smells good too. The trigger on this thing is, is beautiful. I mean, it's a mil spec trigger. One thing the FTC um, brought up, and I totally agree, is that what people will like to do when they've got a mil spec trigger, we're probably talking between, um, you know, six or seven pounds, second stage. This is a two stage trigger. The first stage is probably two and a half to three pounds, second is probably five, six pounds. Hard to say, really, just kind of feeling it. But also that uh, there's just way too many people out there that will take a, a trigger assembly and stone it. And what you're doing is you're removing the case hardness on those parts. So they wear out faster after you stone them. Well, honestly, the best thing to do, if your trigger is too hard or the pull strength is too strong or the brake isn't quite where you want it, you need you, what you should do is get the parts that you need, All right? So you're not removing that case hardening on on the components of your trigger assembly. All right, so that was eight rounds on uh, target, off bags and benched. Let's go have a look. Okay, here's the M1 grand off bags. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is there two? Yeah, there's two there. There. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Interesting that uh, I'm shooting better in the prone. Um, well, it's supported. You know, the rifle isn't touching the bags, but my forearm is touching the bags. This is how I prefer to shoot. Call me a weirdo, but uh, I very rarely shoot off bags. Because I shoot, frequently I'll shoot better. Well, this is a heavy barreled rifle. I need precision. I'll use a rest or a tripod or something to that effect. But shooting off the bags, 
you know, the rifle, the point of impact is different. The rear sights are, are set exactly the same as they were when they were shooting with this. So basically the, the lesson to convey here or to learn here is that a rifle will shoot off bags differently than it will through any other kind of normal positional shooting that you would do. So, uh, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I can do that with a Lee Enfield. I can do something like that barely with a Lee Enfield. I mean, this is a bit, this is a, this is a pretty darn good little group here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I would expect that to be a flyer, but I'm a little bit disappointed with that target out of the, uh, out of the Italian M1 Garand. Anyway, I've got a little bit of ammunition left. Let's burn it up doing some fun shooting. Well, that was a thoroughly enjoyable experience, and uh, and it's no wonder th it's no wonder those it's no wonder this is a beloved rifle. I mean, honestly, I mean it's it's got its unique characteristics, just like Lee Enfields do, just like Model ninety eight Mausers do, but the M one Garand is just it's the Cadillac of the bunch. I mean, uh, I can't imagine what the costs would be to manufacture something like this new today. It's the Cadillac. Of its day, um, you know John John Garand, the designer that uh, that well, basically spawned this rifle, was a genius. He really, truly was. It just cycles so nice. I didn't have one single failure throughout the entire hundred and some some odd rounds that I fired out of this rifle. I mean, it's lubed up nicely. Um, I was running um, uh, new phosphate uh, on block clips for this thing, so it's always that first round. You got to get you got to give the uh, give it a little bit of a bump to get that first round of chamber. But other than that, it, other than that, it ran like a top. Honestly, I did have one misfeed misfire. That was not the rifle's fault. That was the ammunition. There was a problem with the primer on that particular round. Um, again, all of the ammunition fired out of this um, was was hand loads hand loaded ammunition and I will say that uh, uh, you don't want to run some ammunition types out of the M1 Garand you generally don't want to go higher than 168 grain 30 caliber bullet and you you really need to kind of watch what your port pressure is going to be for you're going to be running this uh, you know a different ammunition hand loaded ammunition out of an M1 Garand for example you don't want to be running 180 grain hunting ammunition out of an M1 Garand you could bend the op rod and so I think one of the challenges that FTC has gone through so far as this build was concerned was to try to get that balance right. I mean, so far as the spring tension was concerned, so there's all new springs, but you can buy um, old, new, new old stock or you can buy aftermarket springs. But the, unless that tension is right, you're looking at problems. Uh, it's also really interesting that he's interested in getting into the 6.5 Swede and the 9.3 by 62 Mauser, you know, running 300 grain bullets out of this thing. How, how do you do that? 
Well, you know, this uh, the, the gas the gas system can be adjusted using um, adjustable uh, gas system technology. You you can get for these rifles. So this you don't just need to be running 30 out six. You can run 308. You can run 65 Swede, 9.3 by 62 Mauser, maybe even 35 Wellen, and and they'll run. They'll run. What a, thor a thoroughly enjoyable experience, you guys. If you haven't had the opportunity to go out and shoot an M1 Garand, then you should put it on your bucket list, honestly. What a great rifle. I wish that this was my rifle, but I got to mail it back to him. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you, FTC, for the opportunity to shoot your rifle. <clears throat> I'll uh, unfortunately mail it back to you, and um, it even smells nice. It even sm it's got some kind of strange Italian smell to it. I don't know what you did to this thing, but uh, shoots great, smells great. It was interesting to note that shooting off bags off the bench didn't shoot as good as if it was when I was in the prone position, um, you know, shooting it. I mean, I mean, there's no, there's no mistake about it. Well, one group is better than the other. Why? It's probably got to do with harmonics, you know, dampening of recoil. You know, uh, you know, you're kind of, you've got your weight pushed into the rifle in comparison to sitting on a bench where, you, you know, it's maybe the muzzle's jumping around a bit more. And, you know, I better get out of here. It's gonna, I'm losing light. It's starting to rain. Actually, it's probably gonna snow. And welcome to Canada. Hope you folks are all doing great. Cheers, and as always, Maple Leaf up.